The top story is Ministry of Foreign Affairs says famine is very unlikely to happen in Tigray region. Russian ambassador to Ethiopia Evgeny Tarakin slams U.S. sanctions imposed on Ethiopia. And billionaire philanthropist Mo Ibrahim sharply criticizes the hoarding of COVID-19 vaccines by wealthy nations. Hello and many thanks for joining us. You're watching Addis News Hour with the news. I'm Tabitha John. Do stay with us. Speaker of House of Federation delivers message of PM Abiy Ahmed to the presidents of the European Council and Commission. Speaker of Federation Adam Farah has delivered the message of PM Abiy Ahmed to the president of the European Council Charles Michel and the president of the European Commission Ursula von der Leyen. PM Abiy's message to President von der Leyen was handed over to EU Commissioner for Crisis Management, Yanez Lenarchik, while the message to President Michel was handed over to Mr. Simon Mordew, his Chief Foreign Policy Advisor. Adam also met and discussed with EU Commissioner for International Partnership, Jutta Orpelinian, Commissioner for Crisis Management, Yanez Lenarchik, and Stefano Sanino, Secretary General at the European External Action Service, on issues of common concerns and interests. The discussions with the EU officials focused on explaining efforts being made to undertake peaceful, free and fair national elections on the 21st of June 2021. Millions are in need of food assistance in the state of Tigray that has been ravaged by war following government's military offensive against the TPLF clique, which triggered the first bullets towards the National Defense Force. As the region was already vulnerable for repeated droughts, many feared that the war would result in famine. The government, however, strongly disagrees with those who come up with such conclusions, citing its preparations to make more than 70% of land ready for cultivation this rainy season. Solomon Daniel reports. Contradicting stories are emerging from different directions regarding the situation in the state of Tigray. Following the military oppression of the incumbent to get rid of the TPLF clique, which has been designated as a terrorist group recently. Some rebuke the government of its laxity to properly handle the situation, while others defend it and choose prey for its ingenuity to hunt down suspected criminals. At the middle of the war are millions of people battling to survive with much swift humanitarian aid still needed. When time goes by, fears are rising that famine may occur in the region unless the humanitarian crisis is handled aggressively. The government debunks such predictions as mere speculations and expresses confidence that famine is very unlikely. With regard to uh, the statement of uh, 350,000 people accessing, reaching the level of famine, what we have been telling, uh, what we have been talking with the uh, partners the other day in this hall was about the effort being made by the Ethiopian government so as to uh, enable the local farmers to plant seeds during this, this is because this is a planting season. 70% of the arable land, farmable land is ready. This is what the partners were in this hall and this is what is going on. The Ministry of Agriculture has already prepared 70% of the land. This can accommodate about 1.5 million farmers. Some are comparing the the the, the famine the the famine uh, they are comparing it with the seven when when eight four eight five famine in Ethiopia. That's not going to happen. 
because the effort underway doesn't indicate that. While the government is announcing that the military oppression will be over anytime soon, political analysts like Alamayo Gebramaram are speculating that NATO and its allies are threatening to invade the country under the guise of sexual violence and potential famine in the state. Briefing journalists on Thursday, spokesperson of the Minister of Foreign Affairs Dina Mufti said NATO is not an ordinary alliance that invades a sovereign nation with no reason. Well, I'm, I'm not, I, I didn't hear information about NATO planning to invade Ethiopia. I wish they won't do it uh, because uh, Ethiopia has not, no, we don't want to mess up with anyone. We do have friendly relations with NATO members. I don't know how many members NATO has nowadays. But uh, this is something that, uh, I mean, it's a bit uh, um, non-starter. I mean. <laughs> the ambassador in his bi-weekly press briefing also lost the recent visit of President Uhuru Kenyatta to Ethiopia. The visit, the ambassador said, is a significant milestone to deliberate on the two nations' cooperation in the telecom sector and developing critical projects that serve the people of the two. Russian ambassador to Ethiopia Yevgeny Terekin slams U.S. sanctions against Ethiopia. The ambassador said any meddling into Ethiopia's affairs is a manifestation of neocolonialism and completely unacceptable. Kasahunjani reports. In an exclusive interview with ETV English, the extraordinary and plenipotentiary ambassador of the Russian Federation to Ethiopia, even it slams the recent United States sanction imposed on Ethiopia. The ambassador mentioned other countries which were supposed to be threatened by economic sanctions and yet the yield the trade as an opportunity to strengthen nationalism. Accordingly, Ambassador Yevene called on Ethiopians to counter the recent United States visa and economic sanctions standing in unison and enhancing their solidarity. According to him, the sanction is likely to weaken a two countries' long-standing diplomacy. Not in this kind of attempt is a kind of new or colonialism and is entirely unacceptable by his government. A recent example that uh, caused serious resonance uh, was the imposition of visa restrictions by the United States on representatives of Ethiopian authorities as well as the linking of economic assistance to the internal affairs uh, of Ethiopia. Uh, we deem this policy as unacceptable. It is no secret that sanctions are a favorite, favorite U.S. tactic, but this does not mean that it is correct and can be used as an example. We see it uh, as a manifestation of neocolonialism, as, uh, and we know very well that this will not lead to anything good. As for the attempts to, of certain states to impose on sanctions on Ethiopia under the umbrella or, let us say, under the auspices of the United Nations Security Council, we consider them as a continuation of the above-mentioned arrogant uh, policies, which are unacceptable. We strongly uh, don't... Uh, adopt and don't support uh, such approaches. The ambassador pointed out that the United States has been imposing sanctions on certain nations targeting to weaken the overall economic activities in the countries in Dubai to create submissive governments. This, according to the ambassador, was seen in several parts of the world, including Africa. Generally speaking, Russia has always opposed unilateral sanctions. Uh, and uh, continues to do so. Russia is not adherent uh, of this position, but also follows uh, the policy itself. As a rule, such sanctions do not solve anything or lead to any result, but merely add tension to bilateral relations between countries and uh, destroy the partnership uh, approach to any uh, crisis. Unfortunately, we have to admit that this kind of sanctions uh, are often used by some Western countries against African and uh, Asian states. 
This is a kind of new type colonialism, I think, that has, uh, that has not gone anywhere in the past 60 years, but has only taken a different form. This method of pressure is uh, aimed at, est at establishing uh, comfortable and favorable conditions uh, for the Western world in countries that are consider considered to, to be dependent. Uh, often uh, these are former colonies or states with economic difficulties and vulnerabilities. Russian ambassador to Ethiopia Vendi Turkin underscored that the way to cope with the current United States sanction against Ethiopia is a strengthening internal peace and unity. He also expressed his conviction Ethiopia will overcome the challenges of the sanctions with its own capacity and help of good friends will proceed to the path of prosperity sooner or later. Policy Matters is a conversation platform which aims to provide reasoned analysis and context to the activities, reforms, and policies of the federal government of Ethiopia. Exploring various reforms the government is undertaking, the conversation platform aspires to enable nuanced and informed understanding. Um, so once the proclamation was enacted, the next phase of the work was um, you know, establishing uh, Ethiopian Communications Authority from the ground up. Uh, it, this started with uh, really establishing the institution independently to make sure that it's accountable to um, the Prime Minister's office, but at the same time have independent board members. Now, the, the bid, as I mentioned, uh, is over $8 billion, uh, over a decade. Um, you know, and it reflects the, the highest FDI investment to, to Ethiopia. What, what really stood out? This process will create over 1 million, up to one, from 1 million to 1.5 million new jobs. Um, now we've also learned that the sale of the second uh, license, telecom license, will be postponed and re-auctioned uh, in the coming months. Um, can you help us understand what drove that decision? Um, and in your response, maybe also touch on um, uh, the announcements around infrastructure and mobile money deployments. The news that is for the government to continue to open up uh, the sectors that would allow further economic growth um, you know, and allow uh, the entrepreneurial spirit of the youth is fully uh, captured in, in, a, in a formal sense whereby they will be able to generate revenue for themselves but also for the government through tax. Welcome back. President Sahalor Zodi calls on business people to exert efforts in building schools, suggesting them to draw lessons from Ethiopia's First Ladies in Nastayacho in doing so. Ministry of Education recognized the First Lady for her successful school building initiative. Alula Teklamariam has more. So far, First Ladies in Nastayacho has built over 20 schools in just two years' time. The nation's initiative to keep building additional schools is said to be in a good progress. Ministry of Education thus highly cherished the First Lady for her irreplaceable role in transforming the sector. The modern schools built by the First Lady helped so far thousands of students to enjoy modern schooling. She has successfully built 20 schools in different parts of the country since the commencement of the initiative. Additional schools are also under construction. The Ministry of Education recognized the First Lady for her successful school building initiative. Speaking on the occasion, President Sahalok Zodi applauds the First Lady upon her relentless efforts. What I can witness about success is that the silent ones are the reformists and successful people. What matters is not just lying a foundation stone, but inaugurating. The president further calls on the business people to exert efforts for building schools, suggesting them to draw a lesson from Ethiopia's first lady, Zinashta Yacho, in doing so. We have been able to transform 23,000 tent schools out of the 49,000 tent schools in the last three years. But we have still a lot to do in building the leftover 26,000 tent schools, accommodating over 600,000 students. 
And this needs collective efforts to make that happen. And አራተኛው የትግራይ ውቅራብ ያተክርስቲያን የሚገኘው በገራ አልታና ተያዥ በሆኑ ተራራዎች ላይ ነው ነው የሚባለው Sculpted out of sandstone, the most wondrous of these is a Buna Yamataga. There's only one way up. You have to climb this cliff face. Welcome to the world's most perilous church. The U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, provides more than $181 million to the Tigray region. The support is believed to deliver life-saving food, agricultural supplies, safe drinking water, shelter, health care, and essential services to millions of vulnerable civilians in the region. The humanitarian aid includes nearly 100,000 metric tons of food, which is said to be enough to feed 3 million people for nearly two months. The U.S. has so far provided $487 million to the humanitarian assistance response for Tigray since the crisis began in the area last November. <laughs> 